Good morning, fans of Privateer FX. Coming at you on the Friday, 24 July. Uh, shit seems to be happening here. So, even though it's 24 July and we are in summer markets, uh, we need to pay attention today. We do have these uh, French and German... Well, European in general, PMIs, services, um, and manufacturing. Uh, we also have manufacturing and services PMI out of America and in England, plus new home sales. But really what we need to watch is the equity market. A um, couple things going on here that are worth looking at, and of course dollar-yen. Uh, which we've been patiently waiting for this for the better part of two months. So let's start with the ES chart here. Pretty close to bearish engulfing. We couldn't quite nail that close below 27. It would have been a lot prettier, a lot purtier. It's a purdy, purdy looking chart. Um, below 32.12 now is sort of a place to add to shorts you don't want to you're not pushing chips in here um, but a few things have come together we talked about it on Twitter a little bit yesterday this Kiwi N chart bang 7170 the NQ chart which we've been talking about a lot our little clown Clown level, 11.060. Bang. Since we put in our little penny wise up there, four reds in a row. Today, you can't consider a red yet because it's still w wicked early. Um, but there will be stops below this, 10.370. Looks like a trap down there because you got good support into 10.300. Be careful. Um, but it just adds to this, uh, something is going on here type mentality. Aussie yen, not quite as clean as the Kiwi yen, but looks like a double top as well. So we got NASDAQ double top, Kiwi yen double top, Aussie yen double top. We have a turn bar in Aussie. We have, uh, not quite a turn bar in Kiwi. Kiwi is going to run into support here. Um, down at 90. But Kiwi Yen looks like it's on its way. Neckline down here at 68.15. Huh. A lot of shit going on. And then finally, let's look at this dollar yen. Uh, 106 is important. JP Morgan put out their little options. Uh, let's buy downside last night. I do not disagree with that. It is time to buy downside. The problem today is that uh, vol is so low in dollar yen. So your your standard deviation moves. Say one standard deviation um, comes in around 30. Are we going to have you know your sort of average true range? Whichever metric you want to use for like based on volatility, what what the average range should be per day, because um, vol is still very low in dollar yen. So in that sense, you should buy options. Um, but if you're going to trade spot today, it's tricky, right? So normally we would just club this thing like a baby seal through 106.10. But tricky today. We're gonna have to see some uh, some real dollar weakness. This won't be risk off, I don't think. This is more dollar weakness trade. So you want to see euro dollar flying, maybe really strong PMIs, um, some idiotic comment uh, from the U.S. I don't know what's gonna drive this, but we just need to be on alert. Uh, 
because this is an important level 106. What else is out there? Euro Aussie, we talked about this as a horse when it's risk off. Euro Aussie right hand side in this in this current environment. It's basically Aussie lower, Euro dollar higher. It's just another form of buying Euros. So you could buy Euro Yen, Euro Aussie, Euro Sterling. This is just ways of getting long Euro um, in what we think is sort of a global shift in uh, where money is going to park itself. And I know most of you Americans could never understand why people would park their money in Europe. Even me, who lived in Europe for 25 years, it's hard to understand why you would park your money in Europe. But at the end of the day, if you, if you are European and you owned U.S. assets, which you're basically forced to do, if you want to be competitive and if you want to put your money to work, repatriating the repatriation alone of those flows. So if you own U.S. bonds and you're sick of it, if you own NASDAQ, you want to get out of it, um, bring the money back home because you're afraid, where do you put it? You know, you just stick it in, uh, you know, stick it in short-term bonds here in Europe, even though that's negative yield. Um, or you buy dividend-producing stocks here in Europe, and there's plenty of those, believe it or not. Um, you can easily get a 3% dividend with a basket of European stocks. Uh, but anyway, be that as may. Be that as it may. Euro-Aussie, if it's risk-off, um, is probably better than Euro-Dollar, but you just want to trade both your euro dollar and your euro aussie flexibly now and you want to keep a core long i think for the rest of the summer we'll see how this goes unfortunately it's super thin so you know there is eventually going to be some uh, bullshit move maybe down to 114.10 or something in euro um so you just got to be aware of that ready watching day to day um, be flexible and prepared to trade it. I think that's the way you have to approach what you call summer markets. Um, summer markets trading. It's like a crude kind of got smoked um, yesterday, sort of out of the blue. Looking pretty robust up uh, up there on the 42 handle. Traded all the way down to 40.84 bearish engulfed um, it doesn't look too good right so this adds also to the risk off picture crude tricky bar to trade right so if you want to do a classical technical trade here you sell through 4080 your stop has to be at 4239 we've talked about this a million times if you're gonna leave a buck fifty stop loss are you going to earn 15 bucks on this trade 10 to 1 risk reward so I don't suggest just banging them out through the lows here I do suggest looking for intraday levels to be short crude if you um, if you were to look at wow Volatility is pretty high in crude. I don't know, maybe sell up in 4160. Uh, between 4160 and 4190, if you get a chance, seems unlikely. Um, but that could be a possibility. Crude. Adding to the negativity here. Gold speaks for itself. One, two, three, four, five. It's just acceleration, just. Bang, 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 1900 uh, basically traded futures, cash, same chart. Um, gold's also telling us there's trouble. Uh, even if you don't own gold, you just look at it and you go, shit, there must be trouble. Bitcoin is waking up. This is sort of the last leg of sort of the flood of money supply 
where's the haven trade if the whole world just put two percent of their investments in bitcoin this thing's at a hundred thousand um i don't know if that's going to happen but i do know this chart kind of reminds me of an upside down um dollar yen right Anyway, Bitcoin um, up a little bit, a couple percent uh, this week, but not doing too, too much. Finally, uh, let's look at these emerging markets. They're also sort of ringing the bell here. Talked about double tops. There's a double bottom in um, dollar czar, which trades sort of the opposite of Kiwi Yen and the opposite of NASDAQ. Where to get long, I don't know. Anywhere, basically, uh, which is not the professional answer. But uh, dollar czar looks like it's turned as well. Uh, what do you think the dollar max chart looks like? Guessing the same. Double bottom, 22.17, triple bottom. Anyway, our focus, short dollar yen, short kiwi yen today. We are short stocks, but we're trading it. Summer market's trading it. Chips are not going into the center of the table. Um, we got these PMIs out today, which are going to drive the European morning interest. But as per usual, the real fun, I think, will start when um, the U.S. equity market opens. Good luck out there, people. Uh, Good luck today trading. Have a good weekend, and I will uh, see you all on Monday. Ciao.